wrap up the uh, the vendor due diligence checklist. And um, again, just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's already downloaded the form. Um, it's again, like I've said before, it's pretty interesting that there's been such a, a real demand for the document. Uh, a couple conversations have come from it already. Um, some email exchanges. So um, let's get to it and and, uh, and wrap this up. Again, as always, if you have any follow-up questions or something just doesn't seem to be right, either with an answer that you get from a vendor or just a question that's being asked, please reach out to me in the form of an email and I'll be happy to help in any way I can. So we had talked about the vendor due diligence checklist having six elements and the last two elements that we're gonna review together. One is environmental and export compliance and the other one is subcontractors, partners, and downstream vendors. Why does that matter? Why does environmental and export compliance matter? Because there are still electronics recyclers out there today that are not handling equipment in a proper manner. That is reality. That's not speaking out of school. That's not being disparaging. That is a reality. They're still mishandling equipment. One of the areas that still remains a challenge for us uh, as industry professionals is making sure that this equipment doesn't wind up in third world countries being mismanaged polluting other people's environments and really just simply doing the wrong thing with the material the business is such that um, it can be a, a really great employer of people it can sustain people's lives and families but in order for those things to occur it has to be done correctly so let's talk specifically about exporting and what does the compliance around export mean it means that the company that you're going to work with has to be able to demonstrate and prove to you that when they remove the equipment from your facility on your behalf and they take it back to their facility or facilities that it's being managed in an environmentally compliant manner what does that mean it means that old broken equipment isn't being loaded into an ocean container and shipped overseas oh well my gosh that would never happen it happens there are there are plenty of instances go out and google it and you will see for yourself the other thing you have to realize is that there's equipment that has resale value if it's refurbished it can be resold it can be reused a great form of recycling is to reuse something so it doesn't just simply go to a landfill in this case, electronics, we don't want them to ever go to a landfill. Uh, but not only not going to a landfill here in the United States, but we don't want them to go to a landfill or just out in the open in some third world country and dump in that country. That's just simply morally wrong. The other thing we want to make sure is we really pay attention to CRT monitors, cathode ray tubes. Now you may say, oh my gosh, I haven't seen a CRT in a really long time. Well, you're probably right, but there are still some out there. What are those numbers? I don't know exactly, but we know having been in business for the last 20 years, Reclamere has still seen a share of CRTs. Now that number has gone down, but we still see them. Being able to make sure that um, there is a demonstrated process. So what is the policy? Number one, what's the organization's policy around environmental compliance? What is the demonstrated practice in order to adhere to that policy and then can they prove that to you? If someone tells you that they are not going to landfill any material at all, are they able to show you that there's policy that addresses that, there's a practice that causes the employees to follow that policy, and more importantly, can they prove that to you? So those three steps are, are really important, especially in, in the environmental compliance uh, area. We talk about uh, the employees that work in the organization. What kind of employee safety is there? You know, it, it's a, it's not just about managing your equipment. It's also making sure that the company that you're working with is being responsible with its own employees, making sure that they're not put at risk, put at risk for the mishandling of material, being put at risk for, with shoddy equipment and uh, unsafe business practices. Those things have an effect on people and we need to be aware of that as an industry. And then finally, being able to make sure that um, we're able to track and really validate the downstream impact, the final life of material. So in other words, can you demonstrate 
where equipment is being sold. Are you able to show where your equipment is being recycled? If, if the equipment is coming into, you, into, a, into a vendor's building and it doesn't ultimately stay there, it's got to go somewhere else, downstream is the terminology, then what does that downstream look like? Are you able to get all of the contact information necessary from the original vendor that you work with for all of their downstream partners, their recycling partners, perhaps destruction partners, resale partners, etc. That information is going to be critical because again, you're relying on the vendor to take care of your equipment in a responsible fashion as well as destroy the data, right? Of course. Well, if they're relying on others, those other third parties may impact you as well by doing things inappropriately. That's something to consider, and that's why the Vendor Due Diligence Checklist is your guide to help you answer these questions. And then last and certainly not least, subcontractors, partners, and downstream vendors. I've kind of touched on that a little bit, but let's, let's face it. We know that there are many electronics recyclers out there today that do not have the ability to manage all of the processes and all of the procedures themselves. They have to rely on subcontractors. Those subcontractors could be in logistics, those subcontractors could be in warehousing and storage, those subcontractors could be in data destruction. A wide variety of subcontractors that are out there today. Again, you're relying on an organization like Reclamir to manage equipment and data on your behalf. Well, there are vendors out there that will rely on other third parties to help them as well. That's all part of the way in which we manage the channel, so we understand that. The reality, the liability, I should say, is that those third-party vendors may have an impact, positive or negative, but may have an impact on you. You worked with a vendor who then worked for the third party to manage material on your behalf. So wait a second, Joe, I, I don't have all the time in the world to track down people and, and know where material's going and you know who's doing what. The vendor due diligence checklist is your stopgap measure. It is a great way to make sure that number one, your vendor is doing what they say they're gonna do. Number two, that they're protecting you. And number three, you can document it. So again, I think that this is a, this is a great place to start. Um, I think there'll probably be plenty of questions that you'll have from this. Email those to me directly. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. And uh, be on the lookout for other uh, value-added services and, uh, and educational material that Reclamir will be sharing over the course of, the, of 2021. It's gonna be an exciting year. Um, there is, uh, there's plenty of challenges out there when we continue to manage IT equipment with this whole remote work from home environment. And uh, I think if we just simply begin with something like a vendor due diligence checklist and realize that no one should be afraid or uh, unable to complete this for you and share with you exactly what they're doing from a policy and a practice perspective. So all the best. And like I said, if I can answer any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email. Thanks so much and good luck.